Oh, can you hear me? Can I hear you? We can hear you. Uh, Howdy. While you do so, exist. I, I forget how this works. I just have to hit oh, gosh, the on 20, Niles, right? You're ugly. Uh, Niles, you legitimately jump scared me when your face just popped out of nowhere. Oh, is that what you look like? <laughs> That's what I look like. Okay. Here. You want to see I understand how this works. <laughs> you want to see what my dog looks like? There's Obi. That's a very nice dog. I'm going to pretend that everything in audio... Vi- oh, you know what? One other test for you. But I didn't study. Does this work? Can you tell that something <laughs> is a little bit off? It, it, it does work. How much do I have to pay to get my family members back? Uh, just a little bit of silver. <laughs> oh my. Oh boy. If this were a real podcast, this would be the time to do an intro song to the Adventurers Guild. Oh yeah. Join us now. So in our story thus far, it's a wild, ragtag, unconnected, disjointed group. Some just coming of age, some (coughs) centuries old, and they're all preparing for travels across the continent of Nozon in the realm of Mutoterra. There are multiple continents in this realm. You may see some of them. You may just hear about other ones. Uh, A couple of you specifically know of a different continent that you are from, a different country that you are from. The name of the country of July in the continent of Karth. It was a warring country for centuries, uh, a warring continent even at that. July was the country that seemed to possibly have started the war, but... It's been so long now that it doesn't really matter who started it. Uh, Somebody surely ended that war. So pretty recently, a war on the continent of Karth has just ended. You would have heard small echoes of that even across your continent of Nozon. None of you specifically know of this Adventurer's Guild just yet. We will be starting each of you off in your own small little theater, kind of catching up right at the last second before you're taking off of travels or before uh, this adventure kind of begins. I'm actually going to start off with Arius individually. So Arius, you are currently in the Feywild saying your goodbyes. You've spent plenty of time there, plenty of rest. You've done and learned all that Kaivana wanted to share with you. And it is now your chance to go out and see the rest of the world. At this point, Kaivana is giving you a gift. You're, you're having your normal day-to-day conversations. You're getting ready to now say your goodbyes. And Kaivana pulls out a gift from a satchel she has carrying with her. It's a unique necklace. You can tell that this was hand made and crafted from the plants of the Feywild. And as she gifts it to you, she explains a little bit about this gift and lets you know that she has woven some of her hair into the necklace itself. She always wants it to be a way for you to remember her. And it actually gives her the ability to get a hint about you as well just to keep a small tracker on you, let's say. Uh, If ever you get the feeling that Kaivana is nearby, it is actually her just searching for you, just kind of thinking of you, and she can just do a quick checkup on you. She gets uh, a general idea of your location and of your relative health. So she'll understand if you've been knocked unconscious or uh, if you're running around heartily. She does explain that there are limits to this power, uh, to this necklace. It is a unique skill that she has learned uh, that you won't find in many other forms. So keep it safe. Anything you would like to convey or say to her? Uh, Yes, I will miss you, Kaivana. It has been, what, 420 years since we started that? 430? Somewhere about. This journey will not be easy for me. But know that I will always think of you. That is good. You will always be on my mind as well. (laughs) 
uh, <laughs> she, she uh, gives you a nod uh, and actually begins to open a portal nearby. So she had prepared a spell and gave you an access point to leave the Feywild. She says, I don't know where this will take you, but I do know that wherever you go, you'll be just fine. And you see this portal open uh, and leaving, you can see through it even, which normally uh, a standard portal, you couldn't particularly see the other side. But in this instance, you can see that it is open to a, a, a forest, an area that looks still quite different from the Feywild itself, but an area nonetheless that does look safe, does look relatively at home for you. Thank you. I expect one hell of a party, as you say, when I come back. All right. I'll be here, as you know, forever. Goodbye, my friend. So as you step through the portal uh, and you go to look back from the other side, from this side of the portal, you can't see anything. Uh, you do feel just that little bit of warmth on your neck, and you can tell that it's Kaivana basically checking the spell, feeling for your location. Uh, as that feeling fades away, the portal itself also fades. You're now in sunny daylight, which does differ from the Feywild in its constant twilight. In this area, you see birds chirping, bees buzzing, and you can feel the liveliness of the forest around you. The sun coming through the trees gives you uh, a sight that you haven't seen in hundreds of years. And you take this time to sit down, relax, and take in the sights. I begin immediately sketching my surroundings. Okay. Uh, we will leave you at that for now. So you will be in this forest for the time being. Kalsum, you are in the temple on the mountaintop. It has been a couple weeks since you started to mention your, your feelings to the leaders, to the priest. You know that they've been talking, whispering, and uh, have coming to a decision about what they want for you. All of the leaders come in, in that day, as they normally do, give you a, a greeting as they pass by and begin their blessings and their prayers. One of them takes you aside and says, My son, it seems that you have some growth still to come, more that you must do in this world before you truly, truly can escalate your beliefs and neuralis. Please do prepare yourself. You have all the training that you need to stay safe on your travels, on a journey, but we do believe it is time for you to go on a mission. You were kind of prepared for this already. You knew that that might be something that occurs. You've heard from time to time those being sent on out on missions, whether it be missionaries to foreign lands or simply those exploring and digging deeper for their faith. Uh, you've actually already packed your bags and prepared for this. And so you just take a couple moments to return to your room, gather your things, and then return back to the main hall. When you return, all of the priests are there waiting for you. They actually have two boxes sitting down on the altar. They ask you to come forward. When you approach, they open both the boxes and you see two rings, one in each box. Do you recognize these as the symbols that Neralis wore? They, they explain to you that these are of course just duplicates, just things that can be used to further your faith, deepen your understanding, and maybe catch a glimpse of Whisper from Neralis himself. They offer these gifts to you to keep you safe, to keep your mind in the right. And they ask, is there anything else you need of a child? Just your prayers. Of course. You'll always be in our minds, in our prayers, and you'll be welcome anytime you feel you need to return. They offer you both these rings. You, you do put them both on. You don't feel anything unique. You, you know that these are diminutive <laughs> items. But even with that, as you begin your journey, on your first night, you do feel more at peace than you have in a long time. As you leave and go down the mountain and begin just traveling the landscape, some time passes. It's not too long. But after a, a short period of time, you do feel, um, as you dream, as you sleep, that something is watching you, something is keeping you safe, and you take that to heart and continue your travels, searching for whatever it may be that brings you closer to your God. J839. So you have escaped the battlefield. 
it has been a few weeks that you've kind of been on the run. You you left when you knew uh, it was a losing battle and your faction was falling to pieces. Your leadership told you that this would be the end and that there's nothing else that could be done and offered you the peace to go live out on your own, escape this land, escape this realm, and find something new to live for. Uh, they do leave you with that one final command, find something else that you should live for. Understood. As you leave, you begin your journey out of July to the edge of the continent. Within a few days, you actually start hearing word of a great calamity that has struck the capital and destroyed most of it, destroyed its peoples and destroyed its land. You hear conversations of this calamity and it, it becomes known as Lost July. With knowing that, you decide to leave the continent itself and travel to another land. You sneak aboard a craft, a large shipping barge, and make your way from Karth over to Nozon, a land that you know little of, but you know that it is a relatively peaceful land, not like the warring cities in July. You make it to Nozon, and you do what you must to survive, stealing away, finding safe areas for rest, and eventually, you're just, you, you found a comfortable traveling path, and you're traveling along this road for a short period. Shylock, it has also just been a short time since your life-changing encounter, where you were doing a job, and your ally, your leader, your compatriot, fell. This was supposed to be just a simple delivery, and it turns out there was a double agent, a backstab, that was done. You took what you could. No one had noticed you at the delivery site. They thought it was a one-man job, and you had held back as you always do. You snuck away afterwards, went back home, and have kept to yourself for a while, realizing that you'd no longer be able to make a living with this method. You try to start looking around the town for anything that, that might interest you, something that you might do to make use of your skills, and a way to maybe get out, get away for a little while, till it seems safe. You tell your parents nothing. They already knew nothing about your previous job. They knew you brought home coin from time to time. And uh, anytime they tried to ask you about it, you'd avoid the subject. You do the same here as they notice you. You've been quiet. You've not been going out as much. You avoid it. You deny it. And eventually you hear, well, maybe there's something else that can be done. You hear that there's a guild being rebuilt from a, a prior faction that had been used outside of town. You sneak away one evening, slipping out the back door of the house, sneaking through town, and reaching the border of town before you ever step out into a normal stride. Lyle, it's been a few weeks since that party. Your parents have not let you go out. They've kept you indoors. You've not been able to leave the house, the castle. You've been cooped up. You've been kind of bored, playing with the cat, running around, sneaking to the edge of windows and peeking out across the town. Uh, you do hear... You know, conversations and whispers behind closed doors from time to time. You know your parents have been sending out messengers that they normally wouldn't, you know, there might be a message every once in a while be sent out, but uh, you've been seeing a lot more action in the castle lately. Messengers coming and going. While you're looking out the window, while you're peeking out the window, you recognize uh, Riki, the large, scruffy, scarred up man that's taken you and your family uh, from place to place, leading you in the outlands from time to time when you need to travel to other balls or castles or large gatherings of the wealthy. Riki enters and is taken to meeting chambers where your parents are. You take just a few moments to get to the door and try and listen in. There's not a whole lot that you can hear of their conversation. Eventually, you hear just a boisterous laughter that clearly came from this great big man. <laughs> uh, and as he laughs, oddly enough, you hear your parents follow suit. Your, your mother relatively meekly, your father, you know, putting out as great of a laugh as he can. It does seem odd to you, as they generally don't laugh, uh, at least not in that fashion, not, not so heartily. Usually it's, it's a, uh, oh, haha, yes, so funny type of, type of <laughs> laugh that you hear during cheeky conversations at balls and gatherings. It does seem odd to you, but nonetheless, uh, they do seem hearty. As you hear that, you kind of stumble forward and uh, knock open the door. Uh, they all three turn to you, give an odd look for but a moment, 
and then welcome you in, calling you forward. Your mother and father explain. You, you. <laughs> <laughs> Your mother and father explain that uh, they've they've invited Riki to actually take you on a bit of a journey. They've been looking for ways to help you to grow your skills, to improve your magic, and really to make it safe, they explain. They know what happened wasn't your fault. It wasn't on purpose. But it is something that, that they'd hope won't happen. Riki begins to explain that he actually knows of an adventurer's guild that could use a startup just like you. They're trying to rebuild. They're trying to gather adventurers. Uh, and it would be a great place, a safe place for you to learn and grow your skills. Yes, I want to go. I want to go right now. Can we leave now? Oh, uh, I'm going to need some stuff. Uh, what am I going to need? Oh, can I take Gorestorm with? No, he probably can't come with. He's uh, He's got to stay here. Oh, uh, I, I'm just really excited. I, I, I definitely won't let you guys down. Uh, your your Ooh. mother and father are clearly not extremely surprised by this. They they know that you always try to escape and get out and go on <laughs> adventures on your own and always have to have you drug back by some guard or another. Uh, in this case, they've actually already prepared your travel arrangements. They've had the maids and servants make you additional clothes. And, and gathered a pack. They actually bring out an, a very old gift. They bring out a normal looking bag. It looks a little tattered and torn. But they do let you know uh, as, as they open it. Look, and you look inside. And it looks like it's got weeks worth of clothes somehow stacked in there. Some food, some supplies. Uh, and you even see a couple of weapons that you would not have expected hanging around in the corner. It is a it is a surprise to you. You've never seen this bag before, but they let you know that uh, it was actually your great great grandfather's bag of holding, that unfortunately over time has withered and and worn and really lost much of its magic. W with that, Riki gives a little bit of a chuckle, uh, and you can't help yourself but chuckle as well, just a bit. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is gonna be so cool! I can't believe it. <laughs> Uh, he's, he says, oh, well, it seems like, uh, you're ready to go. So I yeah, suppose definitely. we should be on our way. You and your parents oh. give their goodbyes. Uh, can I, can I say goodbye to Fioni before we leave? I, I just wanted to know that I'm leaving. Oh, uh, child, she, she's been, uh, well, her family is actually serving another. She left just yesterday. I thought you knew. Says uh, your father. It's okay. I'll, I'll send her a letter or something. Ooh, I'll send her stuff, like souvenirs and stuff. Yes. Uh, okay. He kind of gives you a mildly worried look for a second and then <laughs> wipes it away from his face. Well, then, shall we go? Yes, definitely. Bye, Gore Storm. Be good for mom and dad, okay? Don't eat anything or heck of hairballs everywhere. So you begin your travel. It's been a week or so that you're on the road with Riki. He's been teaching you how to camp normally when you traveled you always went in in a large caravan and never had to make anything of your own all of the servants or or guardsmen would do the work for you uh he teaches you a bit of how to start a fire uh what to do with your spare time uh eventually you're walking down the road and he tells you we're getting we're getting close we're approaching we're we're nearly to our destination uh he has explained to you that it's actually just outside of Clearhaven that this Adventurer's Guild is being formed and rebuilt. Uh, and that's just a bit down the road, maybe another day's journey, if not less. Uh, at this point- She's starting to hurt, but she's uh, she's trying to keep a brave face. She's not used to this, but still fun. <laughs> at this point, he he notices that. He, he knows you're, you're kind of stumbling from here <laughs> or there. And he's like, ah, oh, here, I'll, I have a way to tip you up. And he pulls out a little flute and he begins to play a tune. And as he plays this tune, you know, it perks you up and it's it's pretty loud. It's kind of echoing through the forest. Arius, as you're just completing your painting here of this forest scape of the sun peeking through the trees, the sun has adjusted its rays. They're now at a more horizontal angle. The light is actually beginning to reach its twilight. You hear just barely a flute song being played in the distance. Something you've not heard ever. Kaivana was not one to, to play the flute, and you yourself had never, ever learned. Uh, this does interest you. Yes, my interest is immediately piqued, and I just close my art book and begin heading towards the sound. So you're heading towards the sound. You, you hear it passing along, uh, and you're approaching cautiously. You do see 
Uh, as, as you approach in the distance ahead of you, there is a trail, there's a path, there's a road. On this road, you see a great big traveler and he seems to be the one playing this flute. You catch sight of him, you see him uh, and you kind of step back. You're, you're wary of this great big man, this great big Whoa. human. I our Arius is six foot eleven. You're the one that told me you're wary of humans. You told me this. I'm just playing what you. Oh, you wary of humans. Okay, I thought you meant, well, the way you described it, you made it. I thought you were saying I'm wary because he's big. <laughs> no, he's Not a big man. He's, he's a man, a human. No, it's because okay. he's different. <laughs> yeah, Arius is just super <laughs> racist towards humans. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, sorry. Continue. Yeah. So, uh, just just as you kind of duck down, you know, try to try to not be six foot seven. <laughs> you actually catch sight of there is there's a small girl in front of him and she's kind of dancing and trotting along to the tune. And with that, uh, you are less wary of the situation. It doesn't seem like this is a great warrior marching to war like you um, have in your memory banks. That's a good tune. Where did you learn this, Riki? Oh, well, uh, a, f- a friend uh, taught me this. You may meet him sometime. Oh, you mean at the guild? Am I going to meet a lot of your old buddies? Uh, a lot of them, no. But this one, I do believe so. I think it's going to be really cool. I mean, they're probably going to be old and stuff, but like that's still pretty cool, you know? <laughs> this this is true. It, he is quite old. Uh, so I guess, like, should Lyle perhaps make a perception check to see if, like, uh, she notices someone is near or... Yeah, I'd say, I'd say I'm probably hiding behind a tree with my head just slightly poking out. Okay. Are you, Arius, are you at this point <laughs> trying to be stealthy or are you just staying back? I'm just staying back. Okay. Yeah. So as you had turned around in this conversation to speak to Riki, Lyle, uh, as he explains that, you do take a, take a quick glance of the rest of the landscape. You can give me a perception roll. Uh, as you turn, you notice just a random hint, a random light, just a little spark of blue light shooting out from behind a tree, and it catches your eye. Uh, when you when you focus a little bit more, you notice there there is something hiding behind that tree. Oh, hold on. Uh, Lyle starts, like, grabbing for her bag, and she just, like, kind of pulls out a dagger, but then drops the bag, and is like, ah, there, there's something over there. Worry, worry not, little one. He's been following us for a bit of time. It seems to be okay. Uh, he gives uh, a, a little peek over his shoulder and nods his head towards you, Arius. And uh, at this point, you recognize that you've been seen. A bit dejected that I've been seen, but <laughs> I'm trying to be stealthy, but failing at it. Uh, uh, Arius will poke out, like, Babadook style, just, like, his hands <laughs> around the tree and just, like, lean out and begin slowly walking towards him. I also looks pretty nervous, and she's, like, hiding behind Riki and holding her dagger out. Okay, okay. You're holding out in front of you or just, like... Like, holding it like someone that doesn't know how to hold a dagger, Perfect. but, like, yep. knows that you're supposed to point the pointy bit at people. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of go from just holding it in one hand to like holding it in both hands and then like yeah. adjusting like I, uh, clearly clearly trying to figure out the best way to defend yourself in this situation so Arius is approaching Riki and Lyle Arius uh, as you approach you see this this great human this tall rough human but you know tall for a human that's all scarred faced not too old uh, looks looks like about midlife for the human lifespan Calsum, you've been traveling, you've been weary. Uh, you've actually made your way across many different areas of the continent. Eventually, you actually uh, just kind of give up for a little bit of time and decide to just camp. You found a, a nice little stream running by the road and you decide this is the perfect place to camp. Uh, and, and you've basically just been sitting there for a couple of days fishing and, and doing your stuff. You don't even realize that you're actually just a few miles away from a nearby town. You finish your meal of fish and whatnot that you were able to catch and scrounge, and you decide to go on a bit of a stroll this late evening. The sun is almost setting. You can see the light fading in the evening, and you begin your stroll, deciding to take a different path today. You've, you've gone down the southern trail for a while. Why not head north? While heading north, after just a few 
minutes, you actually catch sight of a few travelers. You had heard a song being played in the far, far distance, but that has stopped now. You you see these three individuals, a uh, very large looking cloaked individual, a second long haired man that is also tall for a human, but not quite as big as this other cloaked individual. And then a, a smaller young female wearing a mask. Let me go ahead and let you all give a quick description of yourselves. Actually, maybe just Lyle and Arius for the moment. So Lyle is uh, a young girl. Uh, she looks to be about 18. She has dark skin and she's dressed in a lot of like um, dark clothing. It's like, it is basically the fantasy equivalent of what like a goth might wear. She's got a lot of dark uh, clothing and she has a mask that seems to be maybe specifically to hide her identity um, or just to look cool. Uh, it sort of vaguely resembles a dragon. Um, and yeah, and at the moment she's just, she has like a bag that she dropped on the floor and is maybe slightly spilling out with items and she's just kind of nervously holding a dagger hiding behind her bodyguard. Arius is just this gigantic figure standing six foot 11. Oh, um, okay, you're not that tall. Good to know. Yeah, not that tall. Uh, and uh, just cloaked in this like dark brown well, cloak it's just that's uh, just wrapping around this figure you see he's clutching a book that says wonders of the world and uh you see uh if you get a peek under the cloak you see faint runes uh, glowing all around him and uh he's also carrying a round shield with the uh moon and stars depicted on it with a like twilighty purple background and just Oh, and yes, you notice his bright blue glowing eyes. And Lyle, your eyes also, while in this mask, seem to have a yellowish glow, correct? Yes. Okay. So both of these, you know, individuals have glowing eyes, and then it's just a, a normal man. You, <laughs> it's care, you know, large dude has some axes on his belt, but he's just got a flute in hand. He he does not doesn't seem to be as wary as cautious as the the young girl oh and i don't know if you can see it or not it depends on how well it's hidden in my cloak there's a rapier on my head. at the moment it wouldn't be seen so yes yeah. that, that might come of sight but for now you're just kind of walking with book in hand and maybe shield on your arm yeah, uh, that's, that's Arius. Arius is is approaching the the other two he's still 10 15 feet away Calsum, you're probably 40 feet back. You've just kind of come off the edge of the road uh, and are stepping towards the middle and seeing something going on. It looks to you as if it's just friends greeting each other. Uh, the the man with the flute has turned around and kind of raised his hand uh, in the distance. What do you do? Uh, I would have no issue with approaching them. Okay. So as you're coming up, the, the others don't seem to notice you just yet. Arius, Lyle... Uh, you two are kind of having this, well, Lyle is is, is worried, hey, don't stay back. Ah. Riki, Riki, like, steps in front of you just a little bit just to, like, calm you down and kind of pushes your hand down. Put, put, put that away, little one. This is not needed. Greetings, sir. Hello. It is nice to meet you. I Wait, see there's a guy under there? <laughs> <laughs> I, I am Ar Arius, or Sparks. Well, Arius, uh, what are you doing out here on the road? I noticed you've been following us for a little bit of time, but you seem to just be watching curiously. I heard the wonderful sound of music and wanted to see where it was coming from. Ah, yes. It is a great tune. Wouldn't you say so as well, Lyle? Uh, yeah, I liked it too. Um, I guess it's good to know you're not a stalker. <laughs> I, this, is, this is my first time to this realm in a long, long, long time. Hmm. Yes. Oh, uh... And she kind of like leans over to Riki and is like, is this the kind of thing that like happens around here? Uh, well, around here, uh, maybe not. But on the road, sure. All, all matter of beings are met. It is good that you are cautious. However, it may not always be best to bring out your blade as your first resort. But nonetheless, Arius, what are you, what are you traveling for? I see you've got wonders of the world. What, what's, what do you have for that book? This is my art book. And I open it up and you see like picture uh, paintings of waterfalls <laughs> going upwards in the Feywilds. Uh, just beautiful fake creatures dancing around fires and floating instruments. And uh, the most recent sketch is just a sketch of this forest we're in. 
this is my personal log of everything I find beautiful in the world. Interesting. Lovely. Uh, Lyle kind of shoves her dagger back in, hearing that she's not going to need it. And when the book is brought out, uh, you can't really tell with the mask on, but her eyes widen and she's like, ooh, oh, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Did you draw these? Yes. Are these places you have been? Yes. Wow. And and she's just like looking. She like doesn't want to touch it yet in case that's rude, but she's like very interested. Uh, at this point, Calsum, you've, you've approached close enough that you have noticed that the large human has turned his head towards you while these two are kind of in depth in their conversation. Uh, and he and he nods towards you as well, like a, a nice little friendly head nod down. He says, ah, another traveler on the road. You, sir. And what are you doing out today? Greetings. I'm just relaxing. Oh, it is a good day for relaxing. Indeed. How long have you been traveling? How long have you been on the road? Um, a couple of weeks. Oh quite a bit of time to be out. Is there anything that you're looking for? Traveling to? No destination in mind. Just traveling. <laughs> ah, glorious. He he gives quite a hearty chuckle at that, and all three of you just feel feel the charm off of him and begin to laugh together for just a moment. This is great. Alright. Why? Well, you know what? I'm sure you could use a good bed, a good rest. Why don't you come with us? You too, my large painting friend. This is like uh, this is like uh, uh, when adventurers like hang out together in like a group, uh, a party. We can make like a party and we could all go there together. Where are you heading? I, uh, we're heading to the Adventurers Guild. Uh, Riki's guiding us. That sounds exciting. Indeed. Yeah. But uh. Calxon was just kind of like glancing at Lyle, like amazed at how quickly she can talk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well then, yes, good. This is definitely an interesting event. Uh, he immediately just turns on his heel and begins walking. And after just a few steps, you hear the flute song begin to play again. Yeah, I think Lyle's like skipping this time. He's like, okay, we're going to be an adventure party and we're going to get there and it's going to be really cool. Uh, I haven't been there before, but I'm guessing there's going to be lots of stuff. Uh, oh, have you guys been to guilds before? And she's just talking and talking. All right, we will pause with you three and head over to Shylock. Real quick. How tall is Lyle, like height-wise? Because Calcum's seven six. Let me so. double check that real quick. Uh, I'll throw it in the wondering. chat. Okay, thank you. <laughs> seven six. Jesus, I forgot. Our bulks are big, man. Big boy. This is a this is a party of large people. This yeah, true, true, true. I'm gonna be so small. Yep. I'm like barely five foot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, glorious. So Shylock. You have just reached the edge of town. You begin heading in the direction of the old guild that had long since been decrepit, but you heard it was being worked on. As you're heading that way, you reach the border and you, you're here. You're at the edge. I'm going to drag you onto the map so that you know where you are. Shylock's in a different area than you all. He's no longer in the theater of the mind. Oh, sh how did he escape the theater of the mind? Who knows? <laughs> oh, dear. This is something you all will have to learn at some point. Wow. How do I get out? Uh, you see that the the walls have been repaired of this old building and, and some wood fences have been placed up. You can't technically see inside here just yet, uh, but you hear work going on inside, banging of hammers and things shuffling around in the distance. Uh, but you don't see anyone moving around and walking around out just yet. You take a, a few moments, a few cautionary glances, uh, and then you just kind of blink through the wall of the gate. You see that this looks like uh, there's there's a trough. There's some, some buildings, a little bit of growing corn, growing crop in this small area, and even some hide being tanned. Do you do anything while, while you take it in your um, surroundings? So it looks like this area is where this place is lived in. Yeah, it definitely looks like... Or at least occupied. Occupied, yes. You know last time that you had ever passed by this area, the building itself had been falling apart. Uh, it looks m much better now, but still not like something that's well lived in. But the stonework is being repaired, and of course, fresh water in the trough, fresh hide being tanned, and crops being grown. Definitely seems like something is there. All right, I guess I'll kind of take a look around. So as you look around, uh, you notice this uh, 
small stand here where horses or other traveling animals might be hitched up and fed. There's a feeding trough underneath there. You try and look inside. There are a few windows here and there. But when you look in, it's pretty dark. Uh, these first, This first window that you take a peek in over here, you can almost see, but there's just such a thick layer of dust and dirt and soot from either all the construction or all the time that has passed that you can't get a good look inside. As you approach further, you do notice that the platform has been rebuilt. This is fresh pine smelling wood, uh, a good intake of wood. You try and take a deep breath and all of a sudden you, <coughs> oh my, uh, you definitely smell a stench off just, just off the area, just off the entrance a little bit. You uh, go to take a quick peek inside and you notice that there's a, a an outdoor toilet right there. Like, oh, and that's that's what that smell had been coming oh, from. Oh, gosh. You shut the door hastily and then uh, go about to try and peek in the windows. We're going to pause with you and return to J839. You've been traveling. You, you've you actually finally made your way just to the edge of a town. And just before you uh, decide whether you should enter and try and find a place to sleep and resupply. You decide, you know what? I'm just going to hang out here for a bit. You, you've really been traveling a lot lately and you want to just mm -hmm. gather some more intel. What's going on in this town? You saw someone sneak out just a few minutes ago, just jump over the wall at the edge of town and head off through the woods. And you're like, if what someone's... Did this person look like? What did this person look like? Shylock, would you like to describe yourself? I'm sure. Um... So you see a uh, a medium sized elf. Uh, he's kind of scrawny and uh, pretty slender, and his he's got all the green skin, and he has his hood up. But you could have swore you're not sure, but did he have green fucking hair? <laughs> okay, all right, fair enough. You are then hanging at the edge of town. You see where the entrance is, and you see people's passing by here or there, and you're just taking in the information, trying to gather. What type of people live here? What is there even any goods that are being delivered that I might replenish my wares from? Uh, and as you're just taking in the sights and sounds, you hear a flute song being played in the distance. You would likely go off and hide up in a tree, hide in a corner, do something along those lines. What exactly do you do when you hear? Uh, I probably, I probably wouldn't hide, but I would probably like, I don't know, go stand against a tree, like just observe. Okay. I don't feel a need to hide from anyone necessarily. Absolutely. So as you kind of reach your point of observation, you see a small band of individuals being led by a middle-aged gentleman playing a flute. Nothing of wild note catches your eye at first glance. This just seems like a large fur bulk, a small human, and a you know, medium human in your eyes. But then behind them, kind of following up the pack, he was standing behind the large human. He wasn't obscured per se, but he, he, he wasn't noticed right off the bat. Is another of your kind. Uh, you you see him and give me a perception roll. Okay, let's see how this works. Okay, did All that right. show up? It did. Yes. So you see this large warforged uh, and, and immediately to your eyes, you notice that he seems to be quite an old model. Nothing that has been used since you were created. Uh, this model, you know from your memory banks, is actually from near the start of the war. You would say it's at least a few centuries old. Uh, that model was some of the first that were sent out, and they were all decommissioned, to your understanding. Either destroyed in battle, or made parts for newer, better models. This does catch your interest. As they approach, what do you do? Probably just going to stay observing them. Okay, so uh, as as they approach... The tall man in front takes note of you, cuts off his whistle, uh, and, and just turns and looks and says, ah, we've got another traveler outside of town, and just kind of mentions that in passing to the party. Uh, I think Lyle was busy rambling on about something. Uh, so yeah, so I haven't really been out a whole lot, but you know, I'm really excited about the, oh, what? Oh, hey, hi, hello. Uh, she's seeming a lot more friendly because everyone that they meet seems to be very friendly. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Uh so are you saying hello to me? Yeah, she's waving. <laughs> Greetings, flesh being. Cool. Uh, okay. Hi. 
I'm gonna. I'm totally gonna ignore her after I say greetings. <laughs> and I'm gonna look straight at the Warforged. I'm just gonna say, "You unit, what is your designation?" Sparks. Sparks. The- this is. This is not a common designation. There you go. Pause for one moment. As to you, Arius, when when that is asked of you, the designation was kind of odd, but you were like, okay, I know what he means. He he wants to know what what they call me. Uh, for you, J eight thirty nine, that is a very odd designation, as you know specifically. There there are more clear details that should have been denoted, but you do recall that. At the beginning of the war, the Warforged did not have designations. They they thought it would be an instantaneous war and that uh, a single faction could be sent out and destroy all of their enemies. So uh, that does come back to your memory banks that right. not all of the older models had those designations. Okay. Please continue. Mm, Sparks. Sparks, what brings you to travel with these flesh beings? Just came from another plane of existence and found them. They seem non-threatening, and I could use the company. What? What were you doing on another plane of existence? Living outside the war. Hmm. Curious. Uh, during their conversation, Lyle just like scooted up to the other two characters and was like, "These guys seem kind of like hella weird. Like, is anyone else getting like weird vibes from this?" Not just from them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you don't have to be weirded out by Riki. He's fine. He's my buddy. <laughs> right. Oh, boy. <laughs> what is your designation? This unit is called J839. Uh, and with that, all of you uh, actually take in the look of J839. Would you like mm-hmm. to describe yourself? Yeah. So J839 is uh, six foot seven inches tall. Uh, he's he's a decently tall dude, but small compared to the other two of you, apparently. Uh, and he, while being tall, is thin. Some people would even say that Gumby has a better body than he does when <laughs> roasted. Uh, yeah, so he's tall, but he's he's rather thin, and uh, you know, looks like he could move quite deftly or dexterously. Uh, he is wearing like studded leather armor that covers all of his body with a plague doctor mask on uh, and some sort of brimmed hat similar to the picture you see uh, with it. And you can't see any skin or anything. It's all covered in leather of some sort. So prior to him... leather and clothing, I should say. It's not just all leather, but... Yeah. Prior to him speaking, Lyle, you had thought him to just be another human, another man. Uh, Mm -hmm. Tall... But, I mean, to you, Riki is as tall as him. Uh, you can't really tell the difference from mm-hmm. someone towering over you to another one towering over you, especially Almost. at the distance. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, Calsum, is anything of note for you during this conversation? Or are you just taking it all in? Um, kind of taking it all in. Uh, I feel like Furbolgs tried to stay out of the war as much as they could more of a peaceful race so didn't have a whole lot of interactions with warforged before this and they are clearly very different looking they're they're both tall but with arius being a more broad uh individual and j839 gave a description for calcum good call Uh, this this is perfect yeah now that you're all meeting other than calcum being Uh, a tall man i mean he's very tall seven foot six normal normal looking Purple, besides gray bluish skin, gray eyes, black hair. Um, he's got leather armor on, and over that, a black cloak that is very nondescript, other than the clasp at the neck is made out of um, very white material, and they uh, are doves that just kind of clasp together. The neck clasp of the cloak is basically like two doves intertwined to create yes. the clasp and then he's got a mace that kind of just hangs on his hip so yes the that mace has been seen a dagger has been seen Riki's axes arius your weapons haven't really been of note you, your shield's been seen j839 i don't believe you have any weapons that are kind of outside of your your i mean that, that... i have i have a rapier sheath at my hip okay probably. so that, that would kind of stick out because you're so thin so thin you can't hide it so well okay yeah, if you look if you look carefully there are daggers strapped around my body 
So just to clarify something about the Warforged, are you guys wearing masks or do you have like clearly robotic faces? Well, Ari's just kind of looks like his is a mask. Okay. It's, you know, it's just glowing eyes with a metal front on it. And uh, you can see like kind of lines where a mouth could open, but otherwise it just looks like one solid piece of like a mask in front. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you can imagine a Plague Doctor mask. You can't tell if it's a mask or what's going on with it. Okay, great. That's kind of what I figured. You you wouldn't be able to tell that just from the short interaction. Lyle would assume it's a mask. As... Yeah, like she adjusts her own mask and is like, okay, I guess a bunch of people wear masks around here. Cool. That means I'm not going to stand out as much. <laughs> yeah, so... we're just we're just tall people who talk funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that is have... as much as she knows. Do you have glowing eyes as well, Zach? Yeah, my eyes are glowing white. Awesome. It's not like glow party, bright, but it's just like a you know, yeah, kind of like a dull white grave heads. It, it is pretty great. It's I I like how all of these characters came together. It was fun seeing you guys the character design and like being like <laughs> eyes <laughs> tall. Yeah, very <laughs> lovely party. So good. Unit Sparks, what? purpose do you find in traveling with these flesh beings to seek a greater adventure perhaps to see the world something beyond our initial creation purpose have you found that among the flesh beings yes not among these particular ones but i met an archfey in the feywild who gave my life meaning beyond war an archfey isn't that supposed to be like really like outside this like plane or something like that are you asking as Lyle or? Yeah, yeah. Oh. She's, she's butting into your conversation. <laughs> what yes. is a Feywild? Feywild is a different plane of existence. And an Archfey is the top of the hierarchy there. Uh, they are basically demigods. Worthless, in other words. I was going to say kind of like a queen or something? Yes, she rules over a large domain. That's pretty sick, dude. Your buddies with a queen? Yes, we've been friends for roughly 430 some odd years now. Are okay, you hearing that? I was like, what? <laughs> or, uh, hey, Ricky, how old are you again? Uh, well, definitely not quite that old. But I would say these beings, they, they don't age like you and I. Beings, Even... dudes, they're just tall. Yeah. He looks up <laughs> at both of them and he's like, they're a bit more than tall. Uh, and he, and he turns, does the same thing and turns to Calcium. Yeah, you too. Uh, I'm sure. only a hundred. It's okay. Uh, ah. Seriously? You don't, you don't look a hundred. Wouldn't you be like super wrinkly and stuff? Um, uh, I'm young for my race. Oh, right. Uh, and she kind of like notices the skin stuff. She knows she's like heard of other races, but like... Again, she doesn't really get out much unless she sneaks out. So she's only kind of seen races, doesn't really know what, what they're called or who they are or anything about them. Uh, okay, cool. Um, right. Do you not know what we are, little one? Uh, you're tall guys? Oh, you're travelers. <gasps> no, you're adventurers. That's, that's right. But uh, also, I would guess these two are uh, the Warforged. And this one here, he's something of the Furbog race. Just like your book does it. I knew that. I totally knew that. Mm. <laughs> he he kind of nods in a mm hmm mm hmm kind of way. <laughs> well then, and and just be, you you said your name you because you yes because Arius asked what your Designation information was. was yeah. yeah. Yes. So Riki, uh, taking in the information. So J eight thirty nine was it? You. It seems like you're looking for something. Is there any anything that we might I might help you with in finding? You're saying you're looking for a purpose, possibly. Mm. This unit often questions the same thing. Perhaps a purpose is needed. Oh well, great. Come with us. I've I've got a purpose for you. You could be put to good use. Mm. Uh, he this immediately unit has been put to use in the past for many dangerous things. I... This unit does not wish to be put to use again. The last time I was put to use, I spent a hundred years under a pile of rubble at a human's behest. Okay, dudes, chill out. He just means that we're all going to go hang somewhere. Like, that's all he means, I'm pretty sure. Right, Ricky? <laughs> <laughs> eh, yes, that, that... Do you wish to be hung from this tree? <laughs> no, that like... you probably mean, like... wasn't the right way to 
formulate that statement. Ah, uh, by use, I mean an activity. It would be safe, as this little one here is not meant to be put in any danger. Not anytime soon, at least. Lila is just like standing up to uh, Jay at this point and like trying to stand on her tippy toes to just kind of like get an, 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 an inch on him, but it's not doing much for her stature. <laughs> uh, says, I well, don't understand what you mean by hanging unless you are referring from an object. You know, like go, uh, I don't know, like be in a place with other people, like have a good time like i don't know ricky you explain to him if you're looking for something to do and it's your choice wholeheartedly nothing will be forced upon you you do as you please we may ask you to take on a job but it's always up to you to decide whether you want to do so there is a guild that's being formed an adventurer's guild uh, we're looking for those strong strong at heart strong in mind or kind of flexes a bit and you see his arms just like pff, double in size or <laughs> strong in other ways well kind of snickers seeing him show off j839 finds these terms agreeable uh he reeky's like good good and he takes a step forward and pulls out uh his flute again and just begins to play it and head back towards the town and through the remainder of the woods you only have yeah you know, a little bit to go he kind of says in between verses. What what race is Lyle? For me, you guys can tell she's just a human. Okay. She's got the rounded ears. So you all approach. Riki puts away his flute. And you all end up at the edge of the forest to what seems to be a relatively decrepit building. It's not too bad off. You could tell that there's work being done. The fence surrounding it here is freshly made. Looks no more than a month old. Uh, you can still smell the fresh pine that it was cut from. Uh, you can hear work being done inside. Hammers slamming, tables being moved. For a moment, you hear like, uh, or sorry, after a moment, as you approach the gate, you hear, <coughs> oh, God, that's Shiloh. Uh, and, and Lyle's like kind of looking the place over and is like, I was kind of expecting something bigger. Uh, are you sure this is the right place, Riki? This is it. As I, as I said, we are just rebuilding, just starting off. This would be a great place for you to learn and grow. Guess so. Eh, it'll do. Yeah, so you hear coughing, choking in a way, uh, and Riki steps forward and pushes open the gate and steps inside. I'll just kind of follows. So you all get this, this same description that I had given Shylock earlier, where as you step in or as you see through the gate, uh, there seems to be just a, a small entry area where a bit of work is being done. You see wood supplies sitting out, uh, a trough for animals and food trough and whatnot under a shaded awning. Some leather being dried in the sun and a small, just ever so tiny little uh, garden growing potatoes and corn and things. At the other end of this enclosure you see an elf coughing and choking and backing away from a small building and this is the elf that i saw earlier correct this is the elf that you saw earlier i thought when i saw him earlier he was leaving the town he was leaving the town this is not the town you guys passed the by the town and proceeded to uh, this area oh, okay sorry i misunderstood that all good all good ah hmm Riki, Riki kind of hums to himself. He's like, I don't recognize that one. Uh, he steps forward immediately and says, Greetings. Are you... Hmm. Are you from the town of Clearhaven here? Whoa. Uh, and he kind of turns around. Uh, Shylock kind of turns around startled. Uh, and then he points to the outhouse. Uh, that smell was here when I got here. <laughs> Inside uh, check. <laughs> Riki, Riki gives a hearty <laughs> chuckle to that. And all of you laugh along with him. Uh, sorry, what was the question? I don't remember. Oh, are, are you are you from the town of Clearhaven? Uh, <clears throat> maybe. Hmm. Are you looking to join the guild? Um. Maybe. Oh, all right then. Glorious, great. Come along. Uh, he turns to the rest of you and is like, we're heading inside. 
and he steps up to oh, the front door. It smells like a stable out here. <laughs> it does. You do. You do catch smells that you're not really used to. Uh, mm-hmm. Lyle, you're like, man, it's kind of smelly. It's kind of greeny, kind of grassy. Yeah, we've been traveling on the road, but all right. Well, whatever. As you approach the door, you hear a similar tune coming from inside. The tune that Ricky was playing on his flute can be heard echoing just through the door itself. You hear some nails, some hammering, some sweeping going on. And Ricky steps inside. I'm trying to do the button, but I don't know where I did it. Why can't I? Why can't I select you? I did it. Boom. Oh, but you can't oh. see. Oh, no. Is it still dark? It's, it's all black. Come on. Yeah. I can tell that you did something underneath yes, the black. Yes, I'm so upset because I forgot to turn off the shading when I made it, uh, when I put a big old block on top of everything. Put a block on top of everything so I didn't have to do the shading. All right, here, you're uh Quick, so can we tell, is this like the main entrance to this building? This or did does, it take us into the back? This does look like the main entrance to the building. Okay. Yep. You didn't see any other entrances on the side. You just saw some windows and things. Yeah. Uh, and actually, I'm going to reveal just a little bit more on the southwest. Southwest. On the southwest, you you could see just uh, the starting of a garden on that side as you had approached. It does not seem to be enclosed like uh, the gated area that you had just entered. So this is a, a larger door, one that none of you actually have to stoop through. It's it's pretty tall. Riki steps inside, gives the place a quick look around, and says, "Ah, well, the the cleanup is coming along, but." I guess he wasn't able to get any much more help. Hello, is anyone here? And she's just looking around because she doesn't see anybody yet. Yeah, so as you all step in the door, or as the door first open, the flute song ends, or is cut off, cut short. You still hear banging and sweeping uh, and things like that in this room, but you can't really tell where it's coming from. If you all want to give me a perception check. I will guide myself, so. Guidance for, ooh, yay, that's good. Uh, and perception, do, 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 is that, wow, I really needed that plus four. <laughs> yeah, so uh, actually only Calcum notices much. Uh, Lyle, J39, you just take in the room. So I'll, I'll give a little bit. This looks like a dusty, large entryway there. It, pretty much what you're seeing is what is going to be described, but it's re- relatively empty. It seems like there should be tables around, but there only seems to be one table. There's a, one big board hanging up with a bunch of papers pinned onto it. A few old benches, uh, a couple of old tables with with paper and dust throughout. Uh, but this entryway is pretty well empty. You can tell that the floor actually has just been repaired a bit and the walls themselves are being repaired. But you're you're really both of you just kind of taking in the room itself. Shylock and Arius, you all uh, notice that that there were places for tables and chairs and a lot of different entrances. You also notice that there is a, a number of different entrances and exits outside of this room that seem to lead to different parts of the building. All of these are pretty well sealed shut, though. Both of you notice that each of the doors kind of has a barring on it. Or has been nailed shut for repairs. And last, Calcum, you also notice that there seems to be a invisible force, an invisible uh, being that is currently hammering in the corner of the room. You see that the floor over here is was in much need of repair. And off in the distance, you can see just a hammer flopping on the floor, pressing in some nails. Uh, and you actually see a few boards being pulled off of a shelf and put into the floor. No, no one else really noticed that. It was kind of off into the corner, and there's not someone there doing that thing. Riki says, well, uh, might as well give you the tour. And he, he steps forward says, well, here is uh, the job board. And he looks and he's like, uh, I really hoped this was going to be further along. Sleeping quarters are down there, and he points down to the south. The food hall, well, I guess it's still not ready yet. The cafeteria is going to, well, that doesn't look done either. Gust, you really didn't get anything else done, did you? 
what were you doing all this time? And to all of your surprise, someone shows up just out of the corner of the room. A small halfling appears right beside you, Arius, kind of just at your knee. And he's like, ugh. Well, Riki, you leave me alone for weeks and you expect me to get anything done. Yeah, Riki. <laughs> Do any of you, since you didn't notice, would any of your characters be surprised and jumpy? I would assume Lyle probably. Yeah, she would have jumped when he first showed up. Okay. I would 100% jump. Okay. I would actually would probably just pull out a dagger. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. that, and that, that you, you pull out a dagger and kind of spin on your heel. Arius would not jump for he's used to people popping out of in, invisibility randomly because, you know, Feywild shenanigans. Gotcha. Calcum? He's like, this is Tuesday for me. Uh, Calcum probably would have had a thought that someone was around after seeing the hammer. So he wouldn't have jumped so much as like done a turn quick to head see move who. from I'm looking at this hammer to, oh, hey, he's over there. Yep. Got it. Perfect. Uh, as you do that, Calcum, you do still turn and look back and forth. The hammer is still going in that okay. corner. And Shylock, does this surprise visitor truly surprise you? Or you're kind of used to people appearing? <laughs> uh, he he kind of jumps a little bit, but it's not like a exaggerated. Uh, you see this small diminutive being kind of turn to look at all of you. And particularly J839 and Lyle, uh, a great big grin appears on his face when your, uh, you know, reactions take root. Yeah, yeah. To retcon, she, she definitely jumped and then was like, uh, okay, I, I'm getting tired of people just coming out of nowhere. <laughs> uh, the high, I guess. Uh, he he kind of puts his hands up and says, "Ah, nothing, sir, sir. It's all right. Nothing, nothing to worry about. Sorry, I I just uh seem to come out of nowhere from time to time." Uh, and he steps at a Joe distance. This is a halfling. Yeah, let me let me give you that description. He is uh, a small halfling. He is barefoot and cloaked, and his hair is kind of flowing about, as if there's there's more air moving around the room than there truly is. He's he's kind of over exaggerating his head movements to enunciate upon that. And I know that's a way to talk, not a way to move, but that's what I'm going to use as the word. <laughs> when Lyle notices the hair, she thinks it's cool because it's like, ooh, magic stuff. <laughs> okay, J39 is going to say, is this halfling supposed to be here? Uh, Riki's like, yeah, he he owns the place. Yeah, welcome, welcome. Uh, Riki, I thought you were just bringing one with you. But actually... Maybe this is better. Riki's like, yeah, yeah, we actually were able to gather a few more friends along the road. This here, uh, and Gust had turned to look at Shylock and was like, ah. when he said, I thought you were just bringing one, he actually looks at Shylock and is like, ah, Lyle. And so he's not looking at you. Uh, okay. and, and Riki's like, <clears throat> nods his head over. and It's actually this one, like the, the short one. Oh, <laughs> Yes. You don't have to point out how short I am compared to everybody else. Jeez, gosh. Oh. He does but hi, that. Yeah, I, I, I'm Lyle Lorne. Hi. Welcome, welcome. I'm Gust. I'm glad to have you here. I hear that you may have gotten into a, a bit of trouble and need to figure things out. Yeah, and so Lyle, since she realizes this is who, like, Riki kind of intended her to meet, she finally removes her mask and her uh, glowing eyes go away. She just looks like a normal girl underneath. Yeah, I, um, mom, mom and dad thought it would be good if I, uh, you know, learned how to use magic the right way, I guess. Yeah. Oh, well. Says, so ah, plenty of that to learn here. He kind of snaps his fingers and the hammering stops in the corner. Does Lyle finally notice that? <laughs> no one except for Calcum actually notices that. It just. Okay, so she just hears the hammer just stop. Yeah, you just notice that it gets a little quieter in here for a moment. Weird. Calcum just kind of just like nods a little bit that like, huh? After after that snap and the, the hammer kind of thudding to the ground, you all notice the the board behind you kind of moves and shifts just a, a little bit as if wind is blowing by it. And a few of the papers that are on it are pulled off and dropped on the table next to Riki. Gust steps up, then continues. Ah, yes. Well, you see, I'm trying to rebuild this place. We're... we're Riki might have explained it to you, but I'll do it anyways. I'm trying to rebuild the guild. Make make a new uh, name for ourselves. The guild itself, this adventurer's guild, it could be so much more. But what we need is you. Jobs to be done, coin to be made, harvests to be reaped. 
And, uh, well, if you've got the time, you've got the, the elbow grease repairs to be completed. Currently, I've done most of the work to make this a livable space. But as you can see, it's pretty barren. And unfortunately, we're, we're reaching the end of our funds. Everything else is all hammer and tooth, nail and foot. I, I don't know the saying. <laughs> ah, well, you see, actually, would you all introduce yourselves? I'm sorry. And he takes a moment. You all kind of give yourselves a, a light introduction. Gust now knows what Riki knows. As Shylock explains that he's uh, just, uh, you know... I just live at the town over. Gus is like, oh, good. Well, then, this could be perfect for you. Uh, he points to the table and says, we, we do actually have a couple of jobs here. Pretty easy things that some of the townsfolk have requested of us. We're, we're just getting started and really need to get our foot in the door, so to speak. Yeah, these uh, the, the local residents really could use some help and they're willing to pay for it. Though maybe not in coin. We'll see. We'll see what we can get. Uh, do either of these look good to you all? Lyle started grabbing through the pages and is like, is there any monster killing in this? I heard that adventurers get to like slay monsters and stuff. So you kind of walk over to the job board itself uh, mm -hmm. and start flipping through the things. And, and Riki's like, hold up, hold up, little <laughs> one. What? The, those may be a bit above your pay grade. And he turns to the table and says, this is really what we want to get you started with. And there's actually just two pages two papers, two options on the table for you. Uh, you can see that the job board itself, any of you that are near enough, has a rather large number of papers pinned and stapled and poked and nailed to it, each of them having a different color, a different symbol up in a corner or, or, or in the middle of the page. It's really just kind of willy-nilly, hither-nither on it. Those range from just a light yellow deep red, some blue, some gold, some really just a very odd scaling system. But what you notice most is that the two on the table are just the lightest of yellows, just a little tint, a little circle in the corner marking. Riki says, this is the level. This is a starter, something that's easy, shouldn't take too much work, uh, and shouldn't take too much time. And he points out to something on the board, that one there, you could be out for months, all on your own or in a group. Either way, it's going to take a long time. Let's let's keep an eye on these ones first. I'm not a noob, but fine. I guess a quicker job is probably better anyways. Uh, so she takes a look at those. What are the rest of you all doing? Uh, I am going to... I'm going to just start looking around the room. And uh, almost without thinking about it, I'm going to start sifting through the stuff over here on this table. Or little <laughs> whatever it is. And not even like looking at any of the papers. Just kind of like my hands instinctively start ruffling through them. <laughs> uh, you do still take note that a lot of these are either bills or receipts for supplies and materials. Even without really paying attention, you're like, oh, wow, this is clearly just a list of lumber and nails and things uh, is, is the first glance of that top layer. So you'll go with that. Calsum. Um, so Calsum is just going to kind of like lean against the job board, the pillar that it's on mm -hmm. and like glance at the table, but doesn't really have an opinion on what's on the table. OK, Shylock. Um, so just out of curiosity here, Niles, is this the only door? Is it the one I'm standing next to? No, there's actually a number of doors. Uh, you didn't notice them at first, but now that you've taken time to kind of take in your surroundings, there's the door right next to you. There's a door, uh, a double door, a large set of double doors in this corner over here. You can barely make out around these little edges that there are uh, a few offshoot doors down here in the south. And then one more as you kind of step forward and look about the room off to the west. So there are five slash six more doors than the main entrance that you came through. And Got you it. would have known that from Ricky kind of looking around as he was about to save the rest of the place. And he was like, uh, well, you see, the, the, the food hall is... And the, well, the cafeteria, the sleeping chambers. My Lord, Gus, you haven't done anything. That's right. Okay. Yeah, Shylock's going to kind of just sort of hug the wall a little bit, mm -hmm. walking around the room. Sort of interested in what they're doing or the, the, the nonsense with the table over here, uh, but also like kind of maintaining his distance. Okay. Uh, you, you just take in uh, the notes of a fourth. The area over here is a little worn. There's some loose boards still set up in front of this door. And now you notice there's a, just a hammer laying on the floor 
that you would have recognized from the thud, the thudding. When you step over to that area, you hear <laughs> as the floor just kind of really creaks beneath your feet. <laughs> Got it. Uh, is it noticeable that Shylock is an elf? Yes. Oh, yeah, I would but, say so. Okay, then Arius will immediately go up to him, ask, uh, which of the three courts are you a part of? As you begin to ask that question, Arius, you're very heavy, correct? Yes, I weigh. Oh, no. Either way, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> as long as you say you're very heavy. So you heard the creak uh, as, as this medium-sized elf steps on the floor. The boards beneath you just <laughs> as you step over and they, they don't fall through. Uh, even if they did, it wouldn't be like a deep fall. It's just kind of crushing beneath your feet. Uh, you can clearly tell these w- boards were needing of replacement. And Shylock, you have to kind of jump back and step away off of the edge here. Uh, and Arius, you take just a half a step back as well and then continue. Sorry. I just, those need replacing. I see your, I see that you are an elf. Which of the three courts do you belong to? Uh, the three oh. courts? The Court of Shadow, the Court of the Dawn, or the Court of a Million Stars? Oh, you're one of those. One of what? Uh, I guess I don't really have one. No one's ever asked me that before. Do you not come from the Feywild? I come from somewhere. I come from Clearhaven, and like the town that you passed is probably something you might even say. Right. You get the impression, Arians, he's kind of reluctant to talk to you. <laughs> Uh, if you're not from the Feywild, you're not allowed to be part of the courts. So I'm sorry for your loss. Um, thanks. <laughs> then he'll just do an about face and just kind of walk off. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and as you're walking away, Arius, you kind of hear under his breath, Shylock's like, what the f- What was that? With my passive perception, I definitely hear that. <laughs> uh, so, Niles. <laughs> yes. I'm going to approach Gust. I'm going to say, <clears throat> Halfling, Gust. Yes. You said there was work that needed to be done here. Yeah. Ah, yes, absolutely. So, as I was saying, we we really could use uh, additional supplies, and the townsfolk have offered to give us some if we do a little bit of assistance to them. Uh, He turns and he does a quick, nimble leap up onto the table, as he's kind of shorter than the table. Uh, He would have been pretty low. And he bends down, you know, with a little point. I can't do it. You can't. You can't see it. But ha, ah, here. Uh, and he and he kind of points at the two pages and he says, "Here's a, a couple of the jobs that might be good for you all. Uh, if you do want to help out and repair this place, if you don't really want to put in the elbow grease yourselves, at least you can maybe help out a few of the town's folks and gather us uh, some additional supplies while you're at it." Apologies. There has been a miscommunication. This unit was offering to work on this premises. <gasps> Glorious! He hops down immediately and uh, is at you within just a moment. Steps around you, grabs a couple of hammers and nails that he slips out of this little, I don't know what you call it, cabinetry, uh, and just shoves them in your hands right off the bat. And is rubs his hands together and says, Ah, oh, well, we could use a good worker. It's been so long. He snaps his finger, and right next to you, Shylock, the hammer begins its banging again. He points over and says, we're replacing the boards over here, but uh, on this section, and he comes around the corner, says, these doors could really use replaced. Uh, And if you don't mind, uh, the beds are actually in quite a state of disrepair. And uh, so in this section, he points you down to the south southern door. And he kind of looks at you as, uh, you know, at wanting. He says, ah, perfect. He heads to the door. He pulls it open and it falls off its hinge just right open in front of you. Okay. Uh, Oh, did I just shift the whole map? I saw the shake. So I'm trying to select this box. There you go. The door. And I deleted. (laughs) I deleted. And Gus disappeared right (laughs) before your eyes. Underneath the door. As as the door opens, it kind of falls on top of him. uh, And then he's like, oh, he pushes the door off himself. And yes. Here, you look inside, you see like a couple of empty chests and a bed that's just sitting on the floor. The legs are are broken off. It's all in disarray as if someone had been sleeping there just not too long ago. Okay. Yeah, I'll get started working on all of it, all the stuff that he was pointing to. Glorious. So yeah, you the first thing you do is you kind of pick up that door and start to put it back together and continue from there. Well, at least... We've got a good worker with us, right, Riki? Uh, he he turns and is like, oh, yes, uh, I suppose we do. I'm not going to do that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of st- oh, he stretches out real wide. Ah. <laughs> I can't fix him either. He's just going to be stretched for a while. Why? Why can I not fix you, old great wide man? <laughs> there we go. Uh, 
There we go. <laughs> oh, the gloriousness of moving around in a new machine. Once he realizes J8 is off to the side and alone, Arius will approach him and say, if the uh, flesh ones try to enslave us again, do you have my back? Absolutely. Good. This unit does not wish to be subject to the fleshly rule again. I couldn't agree more. Anyway, nice talking to you. <laughs> One thing uh, to note. We are all so awkward and I love it. It's great. <laughs> Arius, you don't know anything more about the war since, you know, two, 300 years ago. You yeah. know that the war was going on for the hundred years that you were laying on the battlefield. And you know that it was still continuing when you were repaired and rebuilt and escaped to the Feywild. You don't know yet anything else that has happened since. And you do recognize that J839 is very unique to you in his design. It is definitely not the type of design of Warforged that was around when you were trampsing about the battlefields. That is actually a good point. I would I would ask, is, is the war still going on? I've been away for a long time. How long ago did the war finish, Niles? This point, maybe a month, not even a, a month. month. Okay. Let me, uh, do you have an exact time period for me? Uh, did you send me anything specific about needing, uh, I don't know, needing a certain timeline between then and now? No, I didn't. I don't have a specific timeline that I need at all. It has been a month. It took you two and a half weeks to travel from uh, the boat ride. Okay. So you spent probably a, a half a week to a week traveling out of July and to the edge of the continent and then two and a half weeks on a boat and then however much time it's been since then, another week and a half. Uh, it has been roughly 2,612,730 seconds since the war concluded. How efficient. That is nice. It has been roughly 400 years since I was last in the war. J-39 gives you a really kind of like weird look and processes that for a second and says, you have existed much longer than this unit, significantly. I was one of the first to be built. This unit's squad was one of the last. Did your squad make it out alive? You know that some of them didn't, but you don't know about the rest. Some Yes, this unit does not know the outcomes for the others. A long, long time ago, my squad was decimated, and I was left under rubble for many, many decades. That is what J839 has come to expect from the fleshly beings. Some of them are not to be trusted, but I'm getting not a feeling of mistrust around these ones yet. But keep your sensors out. They're all the same. I have found that some fleshy beings, as you put it, are trustworthy, but not all. So it is up for us to determine if these are trustworthy or not. Um, Arius? Yes? Did you mention you spent significant time in the Feywild, right? Yes, like 400 years. Okay, so if it's any consequence to you, you would have noticed as well, Shylock has a uh, necklace with a moon, and it looks very similar to the symbol of Sahanan. Oh, Okay. Just in case that means anything to you. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. No. All right. You I'll... will likely take that in at a later point, but you would have noticed it probably at this point or already. I will leave you to your task, J839. That is appreciated. While that conversation is going on, Kalkson is going to walk over by Riki and just, so where do you and the small one come from? Ah, I see. Well, I am from nowhere, but I could call this place my home for the time being. And this little one, well... And, and he kind of turns to you and lets you explain it for yourself. I She can explain herself if she wants. Sure. I think he was talking about your buddy there, Gust. <laughs> oh, so nice. He, he actually does com completely confuses that. Uh, perfect. This is great. Uh, he is flustered for a moment. I'm not that short, you guys. Jeez. He's flustered for a moment. He's like, oh. Gust kind of steps off to the side. He's ah, well, I'm also, hmm. Well, from nowhere, anywhere, everywhere. This is where I make my home now, though. I suppose, uh, nah, maybe a story for another time. You, though, he looks way up, you know, he just continues to tilt his head up. He, like, you could tell his neck is a little hunched. He's like, all right. And he, he jumps up back on top of the table. So he's a little bit closer. He's still looking chin up to, to the sky yeah. to look up at you. But at least at this point, he's not craning his neck backwards to see or, your face. Or I craning down to look at him. You there, where, where do you travel from? Um, I've spent 
the majority of my years at a temple. He immediately almost interrupts you. Ah, yes, Neralis, as he sees the clasp on your chest cloak. Indeed, indeed. My leaders thought it good for me to experience the world, to find my faith and deepen it. So I've decided to see what happens, as it were. Mm, seeing the world is a great way to grow oneself. As, as he, But I suppose you don't really need to grow that much more. Uh, he <laughs> mumbles under his breath. Ah, well, plenty of things to see and jobs to do. He kind of stamps his foot and hint, hint, nudge, nudge at the papers on the table. Uh, it, I am up for most anything. Glorious, glorious. Anything that you specialize in as, as he uh, turns to look at J839 repairing the door. Let's just say that the group need not worry about their injuries while I'm around. Good. He steps to the other side of the table and at this point actually looks down, ha, finally, <laughs> upon you, Lyle. Calstrom, you actually see Shylock kind of make a weird face at you when he hears you say that. <laughs> <laughs> I hear stories of uh, a small adventure that you might have gone on. Anything special? Uh, Calstrom just smiles when he says the word small. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is going to become a recurring joke, I'm sure. Um... All right, but yeah, she says that. Uh, okay, you're gonna have to be more specific. Was it the time that I snuck out uh, with me and my friends? We went to go see a fight. Uh, I know it was underground, but I mean, it was fine. We had tickets and everything. I even bought them. Um, are you talking about the time that we got some cat birds away from this weird merchant dude in the square? Or like, you gotta be more specific here with what adventure you're talking about. Oh, well, those uh, those do seem <laughs> like fine adventures. I was more so meaning your acidic occurrence. And he, he kind oh, of looks down at the table and is like, have you learned to get that under control? I don't have many tables here. And he <laughs> looks around the room and there are none other than the one that he is currently standing on. I think like uh, uh, Lyle says like, oh, this stuff. And she was just about to uh, do something with her hand. But Riki like stops her because uh, he knows like, you know, again, tables. Yep. She's like, oh, uh, y yeah, I, I can I can do uh, acid damage, uh, acid, acid magic stuff. Um, I don't know why, but it's pretty cool. Like, I can melt all kinds of stuff. Hmm. Well, keep that in check while indoors, maybe, perhaps, perchance. She's really excited, and then she's like, oh, freaking adults and their rules. <laughs> <laughs> there aren't many rules, but please try not to destroy the place. Uh, we're under a bit of repairs. However, we could probably make use of that if you uh, ever wanted to try to learn a bit more. Make Like some... insurance fraud. I have been... <laughs> That's that's. <laughs> he kind of pulls his beard and he's like, that, uh, "Oh my gosh, that was a while back. We, we don't pull those anymore." <laughs> Ricky's Ricky also like grabs. He's like, "Yeah, no." Shylock. He looks up at you, does a quick jaunt off the table, and and steps over in front of you. Hey, well, what about you? That I I see you're looking about any anything uh, particular uh, that I'm that I'm looking for. Oh, that you're good at. Oh, uh, well, I... <laughs> Pause for one moment. What was the question? This, this is a, uh, like, desk that you're next to. Yeah. That's surrounding an area that you hadn't seen over until just now, that there is another door in the room or off the room that I also forgot to mention everybody else, so I'm using this moment to uh, say that there is another door over here uh, behind this enclosed desk area. Uh, okay, yeah. He's actually going to back to this wall here uh -huh. <laughs> and kind of kind of shakily asking it, what, what, what was the question? <laughs> Gus steps forward, hops up onto the desk and is anything that uh, you might be good at. He's, you know, poking and prodding at you, uh, not physically. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it might be easier to show you. Well then, do you uh, try and Go over here. Sure. Well, that would be great if if buttons worked. I would, <laughs> I would let you I do don't that. Know why you expect buttons to work? I don't either. No buttons work in this realm. That button works. Yeah, but it was a lot of work, and I'm gonna accidentally yeah, delete it. all the characters again. You just disappear, uh, and you find yourself in another very shoddy room with uh, some wobbly chairs and a table and a couple of doors. Uh, so yeah, you you blink through the wall. And then you just walk up to the door that you knew was there and uh, push it open. Want to give me a dexterity save? Sure. As you push open the door, you feel it fall off its hinge. And you grab it and hold it up and you kind of like stumble through the door. And, whoop, 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 okay, well, that wasn't as cool as you expected when you <laughs> when you first do that. So I uh, I can, uh, yeah, he's going to kind of look at uh, 
blonde boy there and be like, oh, uh, sorry about the door, but I can do that. <laughs> is well, that what you're asking? That, that is pretty good. Uh, he kind of balance beam walks across the ledge here, stands in front of me and says, I, I think that might be useful to you in some way or another. Okay. <laughs> and and uh, Shylock is still like fumbling with the door and he's finally going to like just kind of let it sit. <laughs> okay. be like, it's kind of yeah. like sitting off of its hinge. Uh, the room <laughs> is is open now to the, the rest of the area. You've like put the door like sideways up against the door frame yeah and, and yeah he's just gonna kind of make sure it's not falling over and then slowly back away and the <laughs> second you back away it slams on the ground <laughs> no 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 his 19 his 19 was pretty good he's got some fingers some some fingies i can fix that if i need to gus is just, ah, it's, yeah, it's fine he snaps his fingers you see the hammer come up float float by uh and kind of like float in front of your face for a second and he's like yeah uh, just uh, step to the side if you don't mind i can fix that i can't move my piece oh there we go so uh yeah you you kind of step to the side the hammer is right there the door itself just kind of seems to float on back onto its hinge and you see the hammer just nail it into the wall like nail it shut at this point, it's like it doesn't. It is clearly not being repaired. It is just being held back up. And you see that hammer banging away, and then it drops to the floor. And Gus is like, "Ah, well, great. Ah, uh, well." And and he's kind of checking around, looking around the room. Oh, great! Look at you. And he looks down at UJ eight thirty nine. Uh, and Arius, you're probably now beginning to walk away from your previous conversation. J eight thirty nine, you have repaired the hinge of this door. And placed it back on its normal frame. And he's like, oh, great, good, glorious. He he continues to you and he's like, well, I suppose once some of the repairs are complete, you all could rest as you can see the light of the windows, all one of them that's in this room at this point. The, mm -hmm. the dawn is setting in, dawn, dusk is setting in, light is Where's fading outside. Where's the dawn? Shylock is... From the room that you were in, you could see light coming in from back windows that I have not lit up to you uh, and will be hiding again as this is an inaccessible area currently as it is under repairs. Yes. Uh, but you did see the light fading from your so, uh, portal into the room. As he says that, J-39 is going to turn around and look at the rest of the room and say, <clears throat> as this squad decided upon a mission to undertake. Gus does a, a quick look about the room and says, ah. Let's leave it for tomorrow. Rest up, think on it, and then maybe you'll be good and prepared. I see that you all look to be weary from travel. He specifically looks at Riki and Lyle as they seem to be the most worn from their travels. The rest of you seem, you know, uh, Kalsum, you have just kind of got up from eating dinner and walked your way over here. And Shylock just left his house in the evening. And JA39, you're, you're used to any type of long uh, mission is yeah. the term I would use. Uh, we, hmm. You might need to roll out your own bed rolls as unfortunately the, the, the bedding situation is just not quite done. Uh, he... Oh, I am 100% changing the pack that I started with because I just realized I picked a pack because it has a bedroll and I don't need that. <laughs> oh god, can I undo that? Oh goodness. Thank, thank god. <laughs> An earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We're in very different places. Fixed for me. Did it yeah, fix for it, it should fix for everyone now. Gust goes ahead and steps forward to this door here. Uh, very well prepared. Just pulls the door off his hinge and sets it right next to the frame. Uh, and opens it up and you see a bunch of tattered beds, old, 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 musty beds, uh, most of them just broken in the middle and sitting on the floor. Nothing in this room is uh, really of use. You might you might grab a blanket and cover yourself with a musty blanket, but otherwise could use some cleaning, some airing out and quite a bit of woodworking. And I'm guessing these are all like normal human sized. Yes. Yes, yeah, they are. So not going to be very comfortable for anyone else. 
yeah. you've got one and a half people that it'll be comfortable for. Riki could probably scrunch up at an angle to fit on one if he needed to. In fairness, two of the people don't care about the beds. Yep. Yeah, no, what we're going to do is sit back to back on the floor so we have 360 feet vision on everything <laughs> so we can't be snuck up on one. Because Warforge keep their eyes and their ears open while they rest inert. Hmm. So we'll just have 360 vision of any intruders that try and come. Lyle, as you step forward and, and look in the door, you can see out this window and see the small bit of garden outside. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, I mean, so yeah, she kind of looks out to the garden and like looks out, looks over the beds. It's like, I mean, as long as there's no bed bugs. Uh, but I, like, she kind of, like, looks back at the group and realizes, like, she kind of still isn't really sure about the Warforged guys, but they seem male to her. So she's like, am I the only girl in this guild? Uh, currently. Uh, okay, well then, I, I need my own room. Like, I, sorry dudes, but, like, no, I'm not gonna hang out with you. And Riki, you're cool too, but, like, no. Gust is like... <sighs> you are full on, Fine. like, a teenager, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. That's her yeah. whole thing. He's like, little... fine. And he quickly rushes into this room, like gathers up a number of objects that were on the bed uh, and on the tables and sweeps them either into uh, a chest or pockets them. And is like, you can make use of this one. So Lyle looks over the room. It's definitely smaller than what she's used to. Uh, but she sees like, you know, it's private. It's her own room. And she's kind of still like on this idea of like, I'm on my own, I'm having an adventure. Uh, so I think she just hops up on the bed and is like, yeah, okay, this will work. Thank you, Gust. Yep. And and he snaps again. Hammer comes flying by and actually like nails <laughs> this door shut on the left side, west side of the room. Uh, was that like your private study or something? Oh, no, you, you're the one that said you wanted uh, your alone. I just made this a little more secure. Oh, it okay. Probably... Yeah, cool. Thanks. Probably not too safe yet. The floor, the walls, we haven't really repaired much from the main area. Right. <laughs> and, and yeah, she notices like the squeaky floorboards. Yeah. Like as you go and sit on the bed, the, the bed like sinks in. You're like, <laughs> uh, some dust kind of crumbles off the wall. And he turns around and is like, ah, nothing to worry about. And he zoops out of the room. Zoops Lyle, zoops. did you take the prestidigitation canter? Prestidigitate. I think I know I took minor illusion. Yeah, yeah. I don't have prestidigitation. Uh, I have minor illusion as like the closest uh, thing to that. Uh, I was going to say uh, in my Saturday game, I used to, we slept in a creepy ass hotel. So I spent five minutes prestidigitationing the entire room I slept in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Clean this I, up. Wipe that off. Dust that area. <laughs> you did kind of read my mind. I think she is going to like decorate and stuff, but like she doesn't really have anything yet. <laughs> You have a whole pack full of interesting and unique things. That's possibly. true. I, I do have my bag folding, but I guess like, yeah, maybe Lyle's kind of in her room, like digging in her bag, but she's kind of listening for if anything mm -hmm. interesting is going on outside. As she stands up and is mm -hmm. looking through her bag, mm -hmm. Gus is like, uh, J39, uh, you want to possibly get to the, the bed next, if you don't mind? And he leans in towards the bed that is clearly was like sinking in when Lyle sat down. This can be arranged. <laughs> yeah, so Lyle will scoot over there. I'll start working on it. Cool. For the bed, I will have you do a roll for how well the repair goes, but not at the moment because that would make me think, and I don't want to. Arius has made his way to the edge of the room to look out the window, seeing a small just starting of a garden. These just look like normal types of plants, uh, possibly some herbs, but not food stuffs that you saw at the other entrance. Is right there the dust on this window? Oh, there is. Yes, there is dust on everything. You would have to... Okay. Uh, Arius would immediately start making like a stained glass window type art thing out of the dust. <laughs> He's like drawing, drawing the S, some diamonds, you know, the S. Oh, God, no. Arius would never stoop that one. <laughs> Come on. Uh, the S is great. In seventh grade, maybe. Uh, and beyond. So, Calcium, you've already kind of stepped down, peeked into the room and like these these beds are clearly yeah not they're like they're just not gonna work for me so are these like benches uh they're like cabinets they're like oh. open cabinets you they this and they go like pretty high up to the ceiling that is a bench yes cool yeah he's gonna just like lay out on the bench perfect glorious and, yeah shylock you're you're currently still behind this desk area you've you've kind of searched it a little bit give me a, a quick investigation check 
Fantastic. Uh, yeah, you you look and you see this would be like a normal check-in desk for things. You see pads of papers, some notes scribbled about, uh, and you actually find just a single copper coin that was slipped in between some of the shelves and had fallen down uh, in between. You can pocket that thing if you want or put it on the desk or however you would react to a random piece <laughs> of copper, random single coin that you find, you know, kind of like the, the dime and the couch cushion type of deal. Do either of these guys uh, see me with a no, copper you coin? were doing this like while all the other conversations about things were going on you were just like well i'm over here gus okay. gus left Ricky doesn't seem to care uh, and you're just like looking around no one really cared like, like they were like go ahead explore do whatever you want don't go in those doors or you'll probably have a roof fall in on you uh so you you find that little copper coin that was slipped behind a board you find an old notepad that looks like all of the pages that are pinned up on the job board are made of the same material and you actually find a couple ink wells that the stamps that were on the pages go to so you could tell this was or is the uh job building station gotcha so i'm gonna go back over to these guys are they still standing here yeah you just kind of hop over the edge of the desk uh gus just kind of walked back from the corner Riki's just kind of been leaning up against the table this whole time resting okay so i'm gonna kind of look at the two of them and be like so what's the deal are you guys like a startup or what <laughs> gus is like gives you a, a, a wrenched up look for a second he's like thought i said that like three times but yes uh it kind of happily it's that's exactly it i purchased this at quite the reasonable cost uh and plan to make quite a name for it we're just starting out you all are our first band of adventurers to join well maybe not the first but you know and what do you get out of this well, the joy of it, really. Yes, of course, some coin is to be made, but most of that will be just reinvested into the repairs and the growth. It's really just something to do. I've lived quite a long life and and finding my next adventure. Riki kind of like <sighs> stretches and he's like, mm, yeah, it's really about time that I maybe settled in a place. I've been traveling and wandering the Outlands for well, my whole life. And at some point, there's got to be a place to stay. Gust is a good friend. And I believe we can make something of it. And what kind of jobs do you expect we'll be doing? Uh, he... And as he's kind of talking, uh, you know, like Shylock, he just kind of like sticks his pinky in his ear like he's scratching it. Uh -huh. <laughs> so what like, what kind of, kind of jobs, jobs do you think we'll doing? be doing? Yeah, well... Take a look. And he shows you to the board and he's like, slay the dragon of the West. Feed my hungry, hungry, flesh eating piranha. <laughs> and like a bunch of random quests like that, like stuck on the board that are like clearly red and, and darker colored things. And then like a few of them that are just like, find my lost puppy. And like those are like the yellow ones and things. But specifically for you all, just to get your feet wet, he turns and points to these two here. And, and they're clearly in the, the class of the find the lost puppy. I'm not giving them to you yet because I want you all to actually like vote on them passively and not discuss them. I, I want you all to just decide on your own whether you want to do job one or job two. And we'll just go off of the vote for Session now. Session one, find puppy. Session 40, fight God. Yep, yep, exactly. I mean, that's how it worked in Naruto. Yep. So... <laughs> Perfect. Hey, all right. For the upcoming session, I will put those two jobs in the job board area and we can vote on them. You all can still finish out actions and decisions here of packing or unpacking or settling in your rest area. But what will happen is at the end of this session, it will kind of be nightfall. Everyone will get their long rest and reset. And then for session one, you will go out on a job. And specifically, you do know that it was requested by a member or members of the, the nearby town of Clearhaven. And so it likely won't be a long journey that you're going on for the first event. Um, I guess I did um, want to ask uh, J839 something uh, before we end, but yeah. Okay. Can I get, yeah, uh, I just had one more thing. So after looking at the, sh the job board, Shalak's going to kind of turn around to uh, Beard Boy there. Um, and he's going to kind of look and be like, so is all of this legal? <laughs> hmm. He steps over to the board, flips a few pages, rips them off the board, shoves them in his pocket, and he goes, 
Yes. And Why do you Shylock's, ask? Uh, and then Shylock's going to kind of look at the board and then look at his pocket and then look at the board again and then look at him and be like, well, I hope it pays well. I'm in. Let me know what you need me to do. <laughs> and then he's going to go walk back out the front door. Perfect. And just stand on the deck. <laughs> <laughs> just stand looking into the distance, looking into the oh evening <laughs> twilight. Oh, one more thing. On the way out the door, uh, Shylock's going to show him the coin that he found in the desk. and be like, I found this in your desk. We'll call it a signing bonus. Gus is like, okay. You you heard the for a second. It's, ah, it's fine. Uh, what do I have to roll for dust art check? That will be a raw dexterity. Only raw dexterity? Okay, fine. Guide, yeah. Uh, you weren't trying to be sneaky about it or anything. It wasn't like you were trying to draw this, this cool art while everyone's standing in the same room with you and you're just trying to like make a little... So no sleight of hand there. Uh, the same thing, J839, you're just kind of hammering away, putting up the bed. Uh, so no no need for sleight of hand or, or stealth or anything. So we're just doing a raw dexterity roll for your bed repairs. Cool. The bed stands up. It no longer is sunken in. And you're like, this is you. You're like, this is good. This is a good bed. Arius, you you actually are like, ooh, as you step away from the window, the light that just now seeps in, like draws the same shapes on the floor, and you're quite happy with it. This is uh, now definitely like dusk and maybe even some moonlight causing this light to, to pour in. J39, you kind of shake the bed a little bit. This will do. You're like, this is uh, this is all I would need to sleep on, is what goes <laughs> through your brain. I'll, uh, I'll turn to Lyle and I'll say, human, Lyle, this appears to be acceptable uh all right so lyle was digging through her bag sherry has like a pile and it's like you realize there's no way she should have been able to fit as much stuff in this bag as she did um but it's all strewn about the floor like weird stuff like ribbons and like vials of glitter instead of potions and stuff like that <laughs> but then she turns to you and is like oh cool thanks hey what is up with your voice by the way like are you trying to do an accent or something he's gonna like like kind of like you know cock his head a little bit like he's being asked a strange question and say what do you mean is there something wrong with this unit's voice it you have like a stutter or something oh oh i'm sorry is it a disability i didn't i didn't really mean to i just you know i kind of noticed and stuff so but it's fine like you know you can talk however you want <laughs> this is the voice of all units in j squad Right. So you have, like, brothers and stuff? Mm. Brothers is not the word that J839 would use to describe the other units in J-Squad. I mean, I guess I guess that's cool. Uh, were they, like, your friends and stuff? Is that why you're kind of wanting to join the guild now? I mean, like, I, I had some friends back home, but I'm excited to make some new ones, I guess? And she suddenly realizes she's, like, talking to a guy who is probably, like, super old like everybody else and is, like, how do we talk to this dude? You would be surprised. Uh, yeah. <laughs> friends is also the wrong word. They were partners. Reliable. More than any flesh being ever has been. Oh. Yeah, the flesh being thing is still also kind of weird, but I'm going to assume that you're part of some kind of club and you guys have this kind of code that you're working with. It seemed like the other glowy-eyed guy had it too. So it's cool, like, you know, you can do there your thing. There's no code. <laughs> this unit and the Sparks unit were created. Created as tools of war. What? And then, okay, she's at this point, she's going to move closer. And, like, does she see? Do I need to do, like, a perception to see? Like, can she tell he's a robot? Uh, you can do a perception a check, yes. Question. Yes. Yeah. 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 So. A perception. Nope. <laughs> no, you're you're like he's just wearing a mask, and his uh, uh, same as my mask. It makes his weird. eyes glow. Like that's your your thought. You're like, no, he's not a he's not a robot. Like clearly, Arius is is some sort of um uh, robot. I could just be wearing a me metal mask. No, she yeah. remember she noticed that you sparked. That was the first thing that caught okay. her eye. But oh, she yeah. might have also thought that was just magic. True. I don't know. But anyway. I'm gonna point. I'm gonna I'm gonna say. That you okay. assume he is a robot and weren't really sure exactly of J eight thirty nine, but you still like Riki did tell you they were Warforged. You then can't think... tell. It, it still looks like this is just a dude it, covered mm -hmm. in a uh, cloak and leather and and a plague doctor mask and hat and all this good stuff. Okay, she's gonna like stare at him for a long time and seem like she's maybe making that connection, but then she's gonna suddenly say like, "Hey, since you're really tall, can you help me string this up? I want to put this above the door." And then she just hands him, like, this big ribbon-y thing. He, uh... Okay. 
He's gonna take it and he's just gonna like affix it somewhere with like a nail and his hammer. Like really ugly. And just put it just wherever it fits. No, you can't okay, you have to let it like flow though. You know? Do you understand like the flow of a room, right? Have you ever done any interior design or anything? Come on. No. This <laughs> unit has constructed and torn down Marshall Camps many times. There was no flow. Obviously, geez. All right, uh, here, let me show you. And then she's going to be, like, really specific about, like, where he needs to, like, put it up. Okay, he'll do it. Uh, but yeah, so that's that's kind of what I wanted to do. <laughs> Is this acceptable to the fleshly one? Yes, uh, but also that's still really creepy every time you say that. Can you just call me Lyle? Mm. Or, like, dude? Perhaps. Or, like, sis or something? I don't know, just call me something that's not fleshly. <laughs> that sounds gross. <laughs> what is dude? Uh, it's kind of like, and sorry, was Gus gonna nope, interrupt you? Go, go ahead. Gus is okay. uh, stepping into the doorway, but it's just like you know, if someone is your friend, I guess kind of like what you said, like your partner, like you can't say hang out. Um, someone that is like around you a lot, and you like that they're around you a lot, then you'll be like, sup, dude, and like you know, do this, and then she just like lightly punches him on the shoulder, like, yeah, bro, dude, what's up? <laughs> Okay, so when you do that, like, it's very <laughs> clear that I'm not flesh, and it's just very right. firm, you know. You, you, like, punch expecting it to give, and it's just like... <laughs> it's like a wall, almost. Why is your armor so hard? Isn't that hard to, like, move in? Jeez. This is not armor. This is <laughs> this unit's arm. Gust walks in, like, right <laughs> as the punch and the statement goes through, and he's like, yeah, uh... Yeah, that's don't don't hit that. You're you'll break a finger. I mean, I guess. And she's just like shaking her hand. Uh, Man, he comes these in guys and guys are like hardcore. It's cool, but also ow. <laughs> he steps up on the bed. The, <laughs> as he does uh, with everything, he just kind of hops up and he's like, Err! he's like, oh, whoa, whoa. Mm -hmm. and it like wiggles a little bit more than he expected. He's like, okay, what? And just <laughs> looks at you for a second. Goes, oh, well, yeah, okay. Steps out, leaves the room. Yeah, okay, bye. Knock next time. Ugh. <laughs> Riki steps into the room uh, with all of the beds, starts looking around, is like, oh, God. He basically <laughs> shoves the bed to the corner, making space, and just rolls out his bedroll in this area. So he's not actually laying on this bed. The bed's been shoved all the way out of the edge of the room, but I can't move those objects there on the map. <laughs> Arius will take a step back and let the, the light of dawn, I mean dusk and the <laughs> light, show the uh, I drew uh, uh, this in the, in the dust. So we, and this is from the window and then reflected onto the floor, correct? <laughs> yes. So on the window, it's definitely like much more uh, identifiable because of the yeah. dust itself could be used and shifted. The floor just looks like a, an outline of this thing. And that's the first thing that Riki sees, uh, and he's like, oh, well, uh, that's good. And he, then he looks up and he goes, oh, very nice, as he looks at the window itself and can see the shade and light come through. The, the dryads are very kind people, as long as you don't mess with their trees. Gus comes in and, and sees that it's, like, getting very dark, and he's like, oh, well, do we need some light in here? And he snaps, and some candles appear and just kind of float in the air, lighting up the room just a little bit. Looks around and is like, nah, not needed. Uh, and he lets them fade. And then he leaves the room. He moves over. Calcium, are you uh, planning on fully, like, going to bed already? Or just begin to lay down and rest and... Just resting at leave? this point. Okay. Kind of, like, looking at the rings on my hand, checking them out once again. It's, you know, something that I've kind of done as a nightly ritual, I guess, since I left the temple. As you're inspecting your rings on your hand and kind of fiddling with them, he comes up and he says, Ah, sir quite nice replicas. Maybe I'll talk with you about them at some time. However, for now, is that comfortable enough for you? I'm sure you could lay out a bedroll or we could pull one out for you rather than just the hardwood of Oh, I'm, I'm used to sleeping on hard surfaces. This felt like being off the floor. Acceptable. He moves forward, takes a step outside into the dark, and it says, Shylock, where are you still just kind of standing around, meandering, looking off into the distance? Yeah, just on the deck there. Yeah. He sees you kind of looking off in the distance. He hops up on the, the ledge just to get up get up to height and says, Ah, so you're from Clearhaven. Will you be returning for the night or 
bedding down here. Did I say it was from Clearhaven? He heard the conversation from inside. You didn't say it to Gus, but Ricky asked you, and you did. Oh, he- okay. Fair enough. Um, I guess I can stay here for the night. You would be surprised that Gus knew that. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's going to kind of like have a moment, like, did I say that to you? And then be like, I guess I'll stay here for the night. Uh, well, no need, no require. I just wanted to let you know, if you do leave, please do return at, uh, at dawn as that will be when the job has begun. And he leaves you and, uh, you know, leaves the door open, but no need to return in. You can return to your quarters at home as he kind of steps inside. Human Lyle, you appear vulnerable and in need of extra protection. This unit will engage sentry mode outside of your door. I also was like, uh, oh, okay, cool. I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess Ricky's going to be tired. He's going to be in a bedroom nearby. Um, yeah, I, I could use a bodyguard and she's kind of like, she's used to having like guards posted around different places at her family's manor. So it's like not too weird for her to just have someone standing outside her door. But she does kind of like, you know, maneuver herself behind you and she's not strong enough to push you, but she kind of like gently nudges you to be like outside and is like, as long as you stay out here, then I think that's cool. Okay, uh, wait, what was your name again? This unit is designated J839. Okay, um, is it cool if I just call you J for short? J was this unit's squad. Uh, yeah, I think J is a pretty good name. Uh, okay, good night, J. And then she shuts the door. <laughs> As you shut the door and go out, go to test out the bed, uh, you go to sit on it and it creaks, but it doesn't mm-hmm. sink in and to kind of sink to the floor as it did before. But it's mm-hmm. definitely not as comfortable as any of the beds that you are used to yeah. at home. She probably like gets up, like takes out her bedroll, tries to like fashion something together. Uh, it's really not working. So she decides like, OK, I'll just be up for a bit until I get tired. Um, so I think then she pulls uh, a little book out of her bag. It's a lot emptier now that she's taken a bunch of stuff out um, and uh, she just starts writing in it. And uh, it seems to be she's just writing a, a journal or a diary. Um, and it's a bunch of things like, you know, I met some people. They're kind of weird, but it's cool. Um, I hope you're having like a cool time too, Fiona. Um, I hope that, you know, my mom and dad are taking care of my cat. Uh, you know, I'm really excited. I think this is going to be cool. And she's just writing stuff in her diary. Yeah, she's just like sitting up on the bed with her back against the headboard. Glorious, glorious. <laughs> Century mode for J839. What does that look like? Do you sit down? Do you stand with legs locked? Do you... Oh, he's just... He's just standing there. Picture a mannequin. He uh-huh. looks like a mannequin. Okay. So like arms kind of out a little bit, hands hang draped to the side, feet facing forward, uh, maybe even chin down ever so slightly as if yeah. it's looking forward. Perfect. Yep, so uh, do your eyes change in sentry mode? Meaning do they go <sighs> dim? Do they go dark? So it from what I was thinking is that they would just go dark and appear as though they're gone. Uh, but that's up to you, I guess. No, that's that's fine. I wanted to know specifically for a situation such as this where Gust is making his last round uh, and almost says something to you and then sees your eyes like fade and like you're you're like locking into sentry mode at this point, like shoulders drape, hands go down, float out to the side, chin lowers ever so slightly and eyes go dark. Uh, and then he heads back uh, into the, the side room here. He sees... That Riki's made his bed bedding on the floor. He almost pulled out his flute. He like pulled it out, got ready to blow it and went, "Mm, no, and just kind of pocketed it again in his pack. Arius, are you also setting up in a sentry mode at this point, settling in for the evening? Um, uh, I, I, one second, I'm reading about a a ruling real quick. Uh, Arius, the way he looks when he's in sentry mode, he just has his arms crossed, staring out the window 300 feet into the forest. Okay. He just feels like standing at the window, admiring his art and looking at at the forest as it reminds him of the Feywild. Okay. And yeah, so what you've done is you've made your art kind of in the center of the window and then even cleared out dust from the other area so you could see out the window around it. And then you've stood there, arms crossed. And once again, same thing. You do the same kind of motion and Gus sees this right as he's going in to like say something. He sees your head kind of go down ever so couple inches and chin lock into a position. And he goes, oh, okay. So just so you know, uh, he doesn't try to say anything to you. And you, you, you would hear him, but he's behind you as you're looking out the window. And you've gone into sentry mode. So he's just okay. basically doing his uh, last little check in. Oh, 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 okay, well, as... 
the last bit of thing. You hear a snap and deep into the corner, you hear a bunch of like wood creaking and things happening and then him crawling into bed. So last is Shylock. Do you return home or do you come hang out somewhere? Yeah, Shylock's actually going to return home. Okay, you'll be in the trees for the morning when you return at first light. If this were a real podcast, this would be the time to do a song to the Adventurer's Guild. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know anything. <laughs>